segment of the wisdom of God. Without wasting much of your time today, we are just going to get right into it by appreciating our Maker for making it possible for us to be counted among the living. So you may want to close your eyes at this point. Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus, eternal rock of ages, we magnify your name. We glorify your holy name. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be yet again in your presence. We are not taking it for granted, neither are we taking you for granted. Because the Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father, today we are here to call upon your name because only inside of you our safety is guaranteed. The Bible also says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower that the righteous run it into it and save. Father, today we run into you because in you our safety is is assured in you our safety is guaranteed lord we are not taking it for granted we ask oh lord that you use me as your oracle speak to your people let them in turn let them hear you not me let them hear your voice not my voice bless your heart bless your families and today lord for those two people who i received their prayer request Rudy and uh, Olga uh, Rudy in, in, in Spain right now we ask that the Lord will reach you there let the hand of mercy come upon you right now in the name of Jesus and heal whatever uh, sickness whatever affliction from the pit of hell that you're going through for remember that he was wounded for your transgression he was Bruise for your iniquity, the chastisement for your peace was upon him, and with his stripes you are healed. So we pronounce healing upon your life right now, Rudy in Spain. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. For he himself took your infirmities. And right now we remember Olga in Ireland here that the Lord will grant her her heart desire and wipe away all her tears forever and replace that garment of heaviness with the garment of praise in the name of Jesus for her to be all of righteousness the planting of the Lord right now we take authority over this atmosphere bringing it down under the subjection of the Lord Jesus commanding every interruption every distraction to be still in the name of Jesus Father, let this whole atmosphere be enveloped with your presence. Envelop it with your presence. For wherever the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. We take authority over every resistant demon from the pit of hell. You are arrested by the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. So folks, today we are going to talk about what I call... The fear of the Lord and prosperity. That's what we're talking about today. I know, strange topic, but I was meant to talk about um, um, kingship. The kingship, but the kingship is a broad topic. So, um, I am still really uh, thinking and pondering upon it, you know, and I haven't gone into it as I'm all to. So that's why I took a pause and just wanted to reflect something that I was dealing with personally in my diary and I wanted to share it with you. It could help you out there and it could help and the way it's helping me as we speak. So I call it the fear of the Lord and prosperity. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So when you say what is the fear of the Lord? From the layman's term, firm, fear means sorry. Fear means to tremble, to be in 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 in, um, um, in terror of or in, to be in dread is kind of situation towards maybe someone like a tyrant or something that you you kind of dread or something so that is a, or you you you're scared of something but in the biblical sense it doesn't mean that way 
the, the in the Bible sense, the, the fear of the Lord um, is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. This is now what the Bible, the biblical um, perspective of um, of the fear of the Lord, what it means. So our foundational scripture is taken from Psalm thirty-four, verse nine. It says. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Praise the Lord. I'll take it again. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Praise the Lord. This verse now really stood out for me the first day I came across it. It really like opened this unusual door for me that that is i kept on thinking about it that means if i fear the lord i will not be in want oh my god this was really mind-blowing so but in biblical sense now let's let's go to what i wrote here that has that has been helping me so far it says here what does it mean to fear the lord the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Proverbs 19. The fear in the biblical sense means respect, reverence. Now, wisdom means knowing things that others do not know. Such insight comes from God only, from the Almighty alone. Wisdom is also being wise. So if you respect, now put the equation together, if you respect and reverence God, you will never be in want. You will never want anything. You will never lack anything. That means you will never ever beg. You will never ever be stranded. Yes. So respecting God and reverencing God means that you, can, you can't do anything that God does not like. Yes. You cannot do anything that God does not like. But you will begin to do the things that God likes. Yes, that's to fear him, to reverence him. Fear, fearing him, not, not being afraid of him or scared of him as the layman was, would trans, would, will interpret fear as. But in the biblical sense and in, in terms of um, what God means by the fear of him is to respect him. The respecting of the Lord, let me put it that way, the respecting of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It is reverencing, it is respect, not fear, not being scared, not being afraid, you know. It, so, because you reverence him, you respect him, you will begin to do things that makes him happy. So that you can stand before him and be recognized. You know, so if you fear him, it is a guarantee of your welfare, it is a guarantee of your success, it is a guarantee of your establishment. So this has been something that I have when I came across I know a lot of people came across um Matthew six thirty three where it says seek first uh, the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. So this is also more like it that is those who fear the lord will never be in want it's 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 kind of it was a mind-blowing um discovery for me and it's here in my diary as you can see i was reading this is what i explained uh, the holy spirit helped me to understand and i explained it to my own understanding that means if i reverence god if i respect god i will never lack I will never be in want. That is a doorway to prosperity, sound health, sound mind, sound everything. So, and that is what I have brought to you today. This is my own personal uh, food, you know, that I feed my spirit. So I, um, because the kingship topic I was meant to discuss is a broad topic. So I asked the Lord, what should I share over the night? He said, why don't you share with them the fear of the Lord and prosperity? So this is, I don't normally preach about prosperity, but um, 
because people will, will misunderstand it because they have over the years and this is for my personal consumption and I decided to share it with you today for you to look into it and see if it's done or if it stood out for you as well you know so um like for our grandfather and the lord what stood out for him was matthew 63 and for me this is what stood out for it is from his own insight that gave back to this insight you know if, so praise the lord hallelujah and so my encouragement today is that you should fear the lord fear in the sense of reverence in him fear in the sense of respecting him let me give you example what i mean by respecting the lord for instance we are we are believers and we normally wake up in the morning we say our prayers and 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 uh, do the rest of the things that we do during the prayer but sometimes for a few of us or some of us uh, endeavor to go all the way by uh, speaking in tongues maybe for hours one hour two hours three hours before we even start up the day yes and we do that the lord knows we have um, people around us who live around us he knows that so what do we do when we are in, in where when we are speaking in tongues and those, those around us want to communicate with us yes they will communicate with you but when you pause in your thoughts it's not like you're you're stopping your prayers you just swallow it and keep speaking in your stomach meanwhile you talking to them because you have to answer them so that they will not feel bad that you're just ignoring them you have to answer them so when you finish answering them what do you do next you go back to the lord as in prayer say lord i'm sorry sir this is respect because you are not just talking to yourself you are not just talking to the world you are not just talking to the air you somebody is there listening to you which is the most high god so when you you have answered the person who wanted to communicate with you at that time the next thing to do is to turn to the maker and say i'm sorry sir you continue your this is to show this is your telling god look i know you are here and me and you we have been talking we have been having a rapport and somebody came and i answered them so this is me saying i'm sorry for us being interrupted so this is a way this is just one of the examples of of telling you how to respect the lord you know show him that yes you respect him that you are not taking him for granted that whatever you two are doing you are not taking it for granted that you know even if you can't see him he's there with you so that is one example and i'm going to leave it at as that because i promise these days that i won't be taking much of your time and moreover i have just started uh, my college i'm doing my masters and um, i have a lot of readings to do a lot of for those of you who have done your masters you know what i'm talking about and so yeah i have a lot of readings to do i am combining everything together which i'm not finding it funny but um the lord is my strength and i'll leave you with this when you fear the lord when you respect him when you reverence him you will not lack you will not lack you will not lack you will be established in all realms you see the bible even said that that is it paul who said that he desired for us to be you know for he said beloved i desire for you that you should prosper you know in good health and all that you know so this prosperity i'm talking about is not just physical money it is mentally your you the you fear the lord he 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 he, he straightens you up in there you fear the lord he straightens you up in there your heart because one thing i have discovered is that if your heart is not right it you will miss it in life because without your heart being right, anything you do is not going to get you up, up there. Your heart first has to be right. When your heart is right, and when I mean your heart is right, it is love. So when there is love in there, you begin to, because love, according to my pastor, Dr. Pastor Paul Nietzsche said, love created the world. So if, the, if love created the world, then love created us in his image and likeness 
And we are meant to be the replica of love. And if you have the right heart, that means love is there and love drives you into reverencing love drives you into respect if you don't love someone you won't reverence them if you don't res if you don't love someone you won't respect them so we will start from love and i pray that the lord will impact you with the gift and the spirit of love because love has a spirit for the bible says that he has not given us the spirit of fear but of power of love and of a sound mind so love is a spirit and I pray that the Spirit of the Lord will be impacted upon you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. So now I'm going to leave you with this. God bless you. God keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you his peace. And today, if you have not given your life to Jesus, I suggest you do so by saying this after me. Lord Jesus, I come before your throne of grace. I have, I recognize that I'm a sinner and I have come to make a Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. Cleanse me from every trace of unrighteousness. Wash me. Purify me. Thank you, Jesus, for making me yours today. I accept you as my Lord and my personal Savior. And thank you for making me your child. So if you have said that prayer, welcome to the family of Yeshua and Mashiach. And I leave you with this. God bless you. God keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you his peace. His peace alone. Shalom.